Hey guys, Friday. Global catastrophe. <laughs> Man, everything is going crazy out there in the world, especially with the uh, flights and the airline and everything and the uh, outage and the internet and whatnot. But anyway, I'm here July 19th. I won't forget this day because it's been crazy for me. I uh, wanted to go over the uranium spot price futures and some stocks. I've been getting nagged here and there. Hey, when you're going to check out some futures in the uranium, I, I miss your analysis. And I tell them, hey, I'm out. I, if I have no position, there's no reason for me to look at it or, or check out, you know, whatever uranium is doing. I, uh, had, you know, hung my hat on January the 2nd, got out of all my positions and uh, haven't looked until some, you know, I get, you know, text and, you know, whatever email or phone call. Hey, can you give me your thoughts on the uranium? What's going on? And I'd be like, well, you know, this is what I see. And, you know, take it or leave it. Um, but I've been getting some more requests. It's like, hey, man, what's going on? What's like really going on? And I was like, all right. I'll tell you what. I'm going to do a video because I think the last video I did was in April of, uh, I think it was this year, April. Oh, uh, maybe... Was it last year? I don't know. I know I saw something about April, but, you know, I could be, uh, I could be wrong about the year, but that's what I saw, April update. So, um, and it has to be this year. I couldn't be doing it last year. But anyway, I I'm, I'm just want to let you know, I have no position in uranium. I, there's no bias for me. I don't really care what uranium does. I'm the type of investor I like to buy cheap and sell high. You know, we're already at, you know, you know, pretty decent high prices. Can it go higher? Yeah, it can go higher. Should you sell? It's up to you. Whatever you want to do. You know, I'm not going to tell you what you do. I just, I'm just a chartist. I look at charts. I use GAN theory. I use uh, esoteric, uh, you know, uh, theories also, you know, that might scare the kids in the classroom. Uh, and I, I look at a lot of things and, you know, and then I decide and make up my mind. And January 1st, I uh, said, you know, I'm getting out, taking my money, my profits and going somewhere where CNBC is not talking about it. Bloomberg is not talking about it. Everyone hates. It's not on no one's radar. And I want to park my money there and wait for that turn uh, to come. So with that being said, just knowing that where I'm coming from with this video, I'm just looking at it now from like an outsider and know that I haven't seen these charts, man, in a while. So I don't even know what's happening with all these, but these are the ones I had on my list right here. And I've always said in my analysis in regards to uh, uranium spot and uranium futures, I had an update the uranium spot because I haven't been I haven't been looking at it at all so I don't even know I uh, you know futures would be easy because everyone has access to its spot it's a little more different so I've always said uh, you need to watch always uranium spot see the monthly closes that's key second uh, I call it the uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse I know it's very doom doom and gloom but you know look at today it, it shouldn't spook you. Uh, the second one should be CAP, K-A-P, Kazatam Pram. Man, I miss saying that. I love saying that. Kazat, Kazatam Pram. And then the next uh, horseman of the apocalypse is uh, CCJ, Cameco from uh, Canada. Those are the uh, one of the horsemen. And Kazatam Pram is one. Uh, and then you got uranium futures and uranium spot price. So uranium spot price, uranium futures. Kazatam Pram and CCJ. For me, that's all you need to know what's really cooking under the hood in regards to the uranium sector. So let's start off with the uh, uranium futures. We already know that we made a high somewhere around 106 ish. And we've been, we stalled here. I've been uh, pounding the tables like, be careful. Uh, we're probably going to stall here, and it played out, pulled back, was chopping around here. I put this trend line. Some people on Twitter was like, <laughs> Twitter's crazy, man. Twitter's like the uh, the cult. 
You ever remember Jim Jones? Jim Jones, the the uh, preacher that took everyone to this island and gave them Kool Aid. That's that's Twitter with the uranium sector. They're just fanatics, you know, freaks. Uh, that anything you say negative about uranium, they go ballistic. It's like a cult. <laughs> it's like you give them a cup of Kool Aid, they'll they'll like take your arm off to drink it. Uh, but I digress. But anyway, there's this trend line. It popped. You know, once we failed here, you put a trend line and you can see that it's just hugging that. Then broke, you know, from this pivot, this trend line here. And trend lines, they break. It's not nothing major. It's just some kind of technical uh, jargon to just kind of show you what's happening with price. Uh, you know, we bottomed here, popped, bottom, fell new low, which is good. Uh, popped kind of sideways and now kind of hugging the trend line. That has been established from these two points. Technical jargon, but pretty much just kind of telling me, you know, we're making lower highs. Not not a lower low, because we got a fail new low. So we gotta watch your any futures. If we could take out this low right here. Where's my thing? Of uh pretty much 8280. My guess and my bet is that it's going to kiss 77 all the way to 71. Those are my targets. 77 because that's the midpoint of this chart. Uh, that's something that I use in my techniques. Midpoint and, uh, and using the futures is 78.90. So yeah, you can kind of give a little wiggle room. That's your 50%. That's your midpoint. Once it gets there, then that you could be like, okay, now what is the uranium? Uh, spot futures, whatever you want to look, what's going to happen here? Is this going to hold and go sideways? That's good because that's healthy. It retraced and found support, and now it's going sideways, sideways, waiting to see if it's going to start now retracing and trend higher to test 10630. Now, if that doesn't happen and it goes sideways and then it just starts creeping a little lower below 77, 78, 90, 71, your next target will probably be 64.45. So if the uranium uh, futures is going down, you think the equities are going to be hanging around on the just going sideways? I honestly think. It's going to follow uranium spot. Unless for some reason, the big boys, the gangsters are going to be just buying it and holding it. Uh, that's, that's another uh, video. But those are the levels in regards to the uranium futures that I'm watching. And so far, this is the daily. It has a sell signal that kicked in on May the 31st. Not that you're going to be selling uranium futures, but you could kind of tell like, hey, maybe it's not a good time to be buying the uranium sector because we don't even have a buy signal yet. Unless we could close above 87.25, in my opinion, I wouldn't be buying any uranium. Uh, especially if you were here, you're probably under the water now. Looking at the weekly, which I probably like to stay more on the weekly, we also have a sell signal that kicked in on June the 10th uh, and has been negative. So this is your level here, and this is your next level here of 64.45. As you can see, we never got to penetrate what I call the bear camp, which is the bear zone of 140 and 110. And by the way, that's my Twitter account where I hang out with all the freaks in a Twitter or X, the X world. Let's go into a cap. Kazatampram. So this is, in my opinion, you know, some people might disagree. This is the uh, cap news production shortage, which I was honestly thinking was a pump and dump news setup. And it, you know, dropped and it kind of went up and then it came down. Somewhere around here, uh, February the 19th, Goldman, you know, sucks. Pump and dump news. Bull trap came in on February the 20th. And they pushed it lower. And then it came back up, and now we're, we can't even penetrate the uh, bear camp or the supply zone, which is 50, 40 range. We're 
hovering around 3840. So this is Kazat Ambram. Kazat Ambram. World's biggest uranium miner warns of production shortfalls. And we can't even penetrate and go higher within the uh, shortfalls. So that's that. That's the uh, second, you know, horseman of the apocalypse. The third one is going to be CCJ. This one was actually stronger here. I can see I got the news here. It's just a reminder of what was going on for me in my analysis. So we pretty much kissed the top of the range, which is the high, which is 56 bucks on Cameco. 56.70 all the way to 44.80. This is all bear camp supply zone. And we're still, where are we? We're 46.55. Yep. 46.55. We're still in it. Once we crack uh, 44.84, uh, that won't be good. And it's still in a buy zone. We have to take out 40 at least to uh, go, you know, or at least go short or get out. But so far, we have a sell signal. And I'm assuming it's because the market's all uh, in chaos right now, uh, which didn't surprise me. But that's uh, that's where we're at right now. Let's see if... Uh, uh, 4477 holds if that doesn't hold you know because it can at least bounce here and go sideways and you're still in the supply zone trying to figure out what uh chemical wants to do but once you get out of the supply zone you know then you're going to have to look at lower pivots and see where would it be that it's going to find uh support and then lastly of uh, the uh four horsemen is uh you got the futures, you got Kasatan Prom, CCJ, and you have Uranium Spot, which I'll be covering in another video clip. So I'm going to uh, quickly look at these stocks of the list that I have. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's, it's just the ones that I've compiled here. So we'll start off with NLR. And so far, let's see if we can open this up here. I got a supply zone of 83 and 74, and it's hanging around there. Uh, so, so far, um, just chopping around, um, nothing, nothing really negative. Weekly is good. Uh, daily, you had, you know, two sell signals, uh, G June the 11th, and now, uh, right now today of, uh, July the 19th. So that does make sense. So you need to hold at least... Uh, 74.95. If it doesn't, uh, then it's going to test some of these pivot lows on the bottom. So that's uh, that's NLR, NXE. Uh, it looks like this is a baby stock, so that's why I have to kind of open this up a little more. Uh, yeah, it's a well. Let's open it up a little even more. It's a baby stocks, and this is a weekly chart. So yeah, so this thing started around well, yeah. 2014 and it's above the demand zone around 652 so yeah it's just good it's, this is all going to be support but we hit a high which is the uh, uh 2.61.8 fibonacci level of 880 uh, i think it did 888 high so it's pulling back uh and i'm sure there is a daily sell signal on this one most of these have already daily sell signals uh, the key one is to watch is the weekly. And so far, it's still holding. It's just, you know, a nice little retracement. Uh, once you take out 589, then things could get a little more interesting. URG, I'm sure, yeah, this one's getting close to the uh, sell signal. If you close below 132, it could get ugly. We're already at 135. And I know definitely you have a sell signal on the daily chart. Um... Uh, I guess the, the best thing, if you want to go long, this way for the uh, daily buy signal to kick in. Uh, the, the bear camp was 215 to 195, and you couldn't penetrate that. Oh, uh, this is a good stock. You, 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 you. Supply zone, bear camp, 1139 to 942. We fail, fail. Sell signal on the weekly, definitely on the daily. 
and you got all this area down here of support pretty much five dollar ish and so far it's at 565 so this one i probably would uh about us to go along this one it will have to close above 779 and then i gotta worry about this area right here rio rio tinto uh below the bear camp which is 96 all the way to 76 and that's right there 76 and you will have a sell signal and i'm sure you probably have it on the uh daily but you can tell this stock is just chop fast so it's not even trending it's like just chop suey fast so i would probably stay away from this um maybe buy it when it gets too extreme down you know if it does really a choppy fest thing and if it gets down here maybe this is a good buy but that's you know my opinion not any financial advice we're ready to chemical uec i used to own this one this was a good one and i sold it uh in the beginning of the year and you can see that the supply zone this is a daily this is a weekly yeah the supply zone is 935 to 748 and we kissed it here you can see the little bear and then we, we came down try to attempt it and then fail so it was like a divergence i'm sure you could put some uh, indicators down here and then they slammed it and it's kind of hovering around the uh 61.8 which is 584 and i put some trends lines to see if it's holding and it's just so far just kind of chopping holding there a little bit it's at 588 uh and 584 is a 61.8 but it's still in buy zone on the weekly but i'm sure at the daily it's not going to be looking too good we never got to close above 686 so it still remains in sell mode uh watch out for that low of 545 if they take that out it might go at least to 476 and with all the stuff going on with the equities market uh, be cautious be very very cautious U R O Y uranium royalty i own this one too and i got rid of it uh and it's it was not the best performing one that i own you would think you know uranium royalty would probably be uh, at least in this area but it wasn't the best so i kind of got rid of it it didn't really i mean it just kind of moved a little bit but not much it's at 234 and as if you take out 220 you're going to have a weekly sell signal and it looks like there's some cycles here cycle works that i've been working out so maybe maybe just check out october maybe this thing could dip in somewhere around october could bounce but that's all my speculation uh kiss the uh supply zone here once and you got the high and you got the fill new high that determines the supply zone and so far uh it couldn't even you know get above 326 which is your midpoint so this one um i don't know maybe i might you know dip my toes somewhere around october and november of this one if it gets ugly but you know i got it at a good price uh but then you know once i started seeing the writing on the wall and you know the occults uh, in that twitter world with the uh the uranium freaks you know you know we're going to the moon i was like oh maybe this is the time i need to get out U R N M supply zone 5175 all the way to 4742 and we at 4681 so we are out of the supply zone the bear camp and uh, this is uh oh this is the sprout boys these are the top gangsters in the uranium sector right here the stop the, the top gangsters so yeah, so this is their new uh, instrument, and so far it's the baby, so cycle works, probably won't work out on this one. Uh, but this was a target I had uh, using these extensions, but didn't get that high. It got all the way to 60, and then now it's pulling back. But the weekly is looking good, uh, and I'm sure the daily, let's see if I could put this normalized here. I'm sure the daily is already in a sell mode. Oh yeah, sell mode kicked in somewhere around June the 11th. So they they slammed it, came up, and big sellers came in, and now they're below the supply zone. Let's go back to our weekly, the uh, top gangsters right here. URA popular ETF weekly's looking good. Uh, it's 2553. So and you're in the supply zone, so you're in chop fest, but at least you're in there hanging with the bears. So 
at least you're not below, you know, like some other ones. But you're, you're you know, you're, you're throwing, you know, punches and, and, and beer cans at each other in this zone right here. 3160 all the way to 2849. So, yeah, you got, you're doing pretty good if you're here. Uh, actually, no. Uh, what is this? 2849 and you're 2817. Oh, yeah. Somebody just slapped the crap out of you here. And you're, like, going down. So, if you can't regain this, uh, it could get very ugly. You could probably kiss 2578. I got Hakanashi candles, you know why? Because it's kind of, I, I got to use it on the uh, futures, but let me put my r regular candle. There you go. Now I can kind of see what's really cooking in here. Yeah, it's kind of tricky with the Hakanashi candles. So, yeah, you're definitely here. So, there's probably going to be some area support and definitely the uh, weekly, uh, the daily, S, uh, daily, uh, the daily sell signals already established. S R U U F. This is another. This is a Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. Uh, I think this is another baby one. So I need to go back. Oh, is it August of twenty two? Wow. Yeah. Look at that. So this is the baby one. And then it popped. Got a buy signal. Hit the uh, sixty one point eight twenty four twenty. Pierced right through it, and now got a sell signal of June third. And it was kind of back and forth, and now the bears have kicked it out of. It's not even a supply zone; it's more like Fibonacci levels. So you got your first your 100% extension, which is 1855, and you're below it. Um, I bet you, if it was to sell off, it would probably kiss 1661. If you really like this, uh, maybe this is probably where you probably want to get interested and see if it holds. Uh, but if it doesn't hold, it could get it could get ugly here. Lastly, D no, not la yeah. Lastly, DNN DNN. I used to own this one too, and I got rid of it also. And uh, this one went as high as two forty seven, and it's now in the supply zone. It looks like I had two supply zone. This was a bigger one over here, and so I had two of them, and so far it's chopping around on this one right here and that's gonna be it's a dollar 95 this one really didn't yeah it didn't really do much in my opinion but you know you got the 38.2 which is a dollar 77 still in a buy you know still in a buy zone but once you you know, clear out 184 uh you just gotta look at some areas here where you could think it might find support you got a trend line here this one looks like it already cracked. And on the daily, I bet you, yeah, we got a sell signal here. It was a buy. It was a bull trap. And now we have one on the 18th. So that's that. So that covered some of the stocks. I know maybe some of you guys don't, you know, own all of these stocks or some of you, you know, own uh, Australian or Canadian. That's fine. I just kind of cover the ones from the U.S. because, you know, I'm in the U.S. I could trade these. Uh, and I cover some ETFs and the futures. Now, the next clip, we're going to look at the uranium uh, spot price. But we're going to, before we go to that chart, which I call the master chart, I'm going to look at uranium cycles, spectrum cycle analysis, and see what's cooking there. And then we'll jump into the master chart. Okay, so before I do the uh, cycle analysis, you know, if you want to get some good sentiment, just type in the uranium sector and see what comes up. As you can see, you, you'll see some uh, some uh, information here. Just look at the headlines. Big move ahead in the uranium market. That was a month ago. Uh, uranium fundamentals. Uh, that's uh, Rick Rule. He's he's like the top dog in the sector. Uh, like the, you know, the top gangster. You don't want to say that I'm joking, but... Oh, Terry, this guy, I spoke to him once on the phone. He filled me in with some info on um, Uranium Sector. Uh, nice gentleman. You know, we, we chatted one time. He gave me some insight, and, you know, I took it off with some information, and then uh, ran with the, uh, with the other horses. He started investing on the Uranium Sector. So yeah, you can look at that, you know, you can kind of get an idea of what the uh, uranium sector sentiment is. And if you want to get it recently, you go to one month, you can kind of see 
what's happening. There you go. You got Bloomberg, Uranium Global Outlook. So they, you got a lot of information. Uh, and a lot of it, you know, uh, uh, Scott Melvy, that's the U, uh, Uranium Royalty. Um, UEC. So there's a lot of information you could get there. Some of it, I think maybe 90% 90, 90 of it is bullish. Maybe that one, that 5% or 1%, um, uh, it's mixed. And maybe that's just a 1% that's bearish. But the 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 overall of the, the the overall of the sector everybody thinks they're going to go to the moon so uh that's one thing you could do also you could you could probably type in uranium futures also you could do is uranium spot price uh and then some stuff that comes out there oh whoa 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 look at that look where i'm at yeah my last one was in april and uh, I was pointing at this, and maybe this didn't get a lot of views because they're like, "Yeah, your enemy is not going down. We're going to the moon," you know, and so forth. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. So you can kind of get an idea. Look, listen to the other pros and the other, you know, the other insta analysts, and get some ideas from them. Here you got an update. This was a month ago. It's an hour long, so you you know you just 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 come with an open mind and just listen to what other people are thinking about the uranium sector, and then make your own guess and make your own decisions. So with that, and that's this is something if you want to use for sentiment, just kind of see what's what's out there. Don't even go to Twitter because that's where the the cults hang out in regards to the uranium sector. So let's go into the. Uh, Spectrum cycle analysis and see what that is telling us in regards to the uranium sector. Okay, so this is my spectrum cycle analyzer in that April 2024 update. This is the uh, the chart I was using. This is where I was pointing at. And there's two cycles here. One is like bullish, like super bullish, and one uh, you could probably say it's it's at a turning point. So I'm going to start off with the bullish bullish view, which is the cycle, which is 286, and I'm using spot price. I got data from uh, uranium uh, spot futures going back all the way to 1980, and this is what it's done. And then somewhere around, just in case you're new, 2000, it got this nice little pop. It hit somewhere around 136 and change. Then it came down, then it went up here. This is where the Fukushima happened, and then it really got ugly. People started hating uranium. There's somewhere around December or you know, November 2016, it just kind of consolidated almost like you know, half a year, and then it started grinding up slowly. Got this pop and got this super big pop, uh, somewhere around January of 20. 24 and it's been pulling back and that's where we at uh 84 and 25 cents so 286 is the cycle let's pop that on and see what we got this is the bullish cycle so those guys you know everybody else is like oh yeah we, this is this is this is just the beginning baby we're gonna we're gonna grind i mean we're going to the moon well, this backs them up. They got some. They got some cycles backing them up, uh, and this one peaks as of right now. And this is always going to fluctuate because these are dynamic cycles, spectrum cycle analysis. This one is going to peak somewhere around, you know, a ballpark of you know, May of twenty twenty eight. I think I remember saying something about thirty. 2032, but maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm watching too much sci-fi. But yeah, a around April, May 2020. Uh, no, my bad. I was looking at a date. April uh, or May of 2031. I was right. I was looking at a date. April, April or May of 2031. This cycle gets toppy. So you know, from here we could be going like this, and you know, I don't know, whatever it's gonna do, but it's not gonna go in a straight line like everybody else thinks is gonna go. You're gonna have some curveballs, 
some approvals, maybe some catastrophes, maybe some things going, you know, who knows, some nukes thrown at each other. But somehow this is where the cycle hits a peak. And if we open this up a little bit, there, this, this is a little call, I call it the fractal cycle. It's a little smaller than this big one. But it has nothing to do with this big one. This is just independent from this one. And this one, it's a dynamic, dynamic cycle. Uh, and it's a cycle of 22. And this cycle just hit a peak right here around February of 2024. Or you could say March, somewhere around there between February and March. Mind you, these are monthly closes. So that is something you want to kind of pay attention to. You can see right when we hit a peak here around April 30th of 2022, the market didn't crash and follow it down. It just went sideways. So that has that happens also. Don't get spooked just because you see it going like this. Uh, that we're going to go. It could. I'm not going to say it won't. Because I've seen it in the past. But sometimes in a bull market, what happens is, is that it just kind of goes sideways. But the risk also is that, you know, you could potentially go down. And then somewhere around 2025 of January potentially using probabilities go up so those are your two paths sideways on a down dominant cycle which is just choppy and once we get to the trough and then resume the bullish trend or sell off uh you know maybe come down to this peak of uh, 57 find support there you know around uh january of 2025 and then resume this trend higher somebody's calling me so i'm gonna ignore that so yeah so i'm just showing you the options so you won't you know the kids won't get spooked here now the one that i'm watching that i'm concerned is this 175 and look i haven't even done this in a while but this is that april remember that april video on youtube this one is this peak that i'm watching uh, the dominant cycle it's around uh you could say February, it pretty much lines up with the uh, dominant cycle, which is smaller. It's 22. This is 175. Yep. And this cycle goes down, and this hike cycle hits a trough of April 29th of 2031. So there are opposites. Well, this is a conjunction. So let me take this off. There are an opposite. So one is going down, and one is going up. Uh, very interesting. I've seen this in the past. Uh, it may follow the bullish one, you know, because everybody's thinking that, you know, uranium prices are going to go higher. Or it may go, you know, and do the opposite and follow the, the, the bearish one. Which one is going to follow? I don't know. But we'll find out, you know, as long as we're alive and this place doesn't blow up, we'll be around and find out what's going to play out. But I just wanted to show you the bullish and the bearish, the bearish view. And in regards to the dominant cycle, we're at a peak. In regards to the cycle of 175, we are at a peak. So we start seeing higher, I mean, lower highs, lower lows and lower highs uh, within the next couple of months, years, next year, just, you know, sideways and, you know, kind of like this, pretty much this kind of price action. Going into 2031, Chances are this one is going to play out. Um, but also, since this is so many years, this is not like the dominant cycle, which you could go sideways and then resume. That's, that's is where it's going to get interesting. So with the dominant cycle, it ends this year. So we go sideways and we go up and take out that one, you know, 106.30-ish and continue going higher. It's probably going to ignore this one. And it's going to follow the 286 and maybe go test these highs of 136. So that's how I'm seeing it with the uh, cycle analysis on that. Anything else? I think that's it. So now we're going to go to the master chart. Now that I made that clear, hopefully I made it clear just so you could kind of see the view is the, the bullish view. So if you think we're going to go to 2031, you can end this video. You don't have to see anything else. You're... You're all set, baby. You're going to make the big kahunas.
You don't got to worry about anything else. Just close your eyes. Don't look at the charts. In 2031, you're going to be happy. You know, you can just shut the whole YouTube. You don't even have to even look at YouTube anymore. You can close your accounts on Twitter and, and everything. And when 2031 comes, just open your account. You're going to be fat, like a fat cow. Don't even know what to do with the money. But if you're like, hmm, I don't know what's going to happen. Could this play out? Can we just go sideways to, uh, you know, uh, 2025? Resume? Can we pull back? I don't know. This is something you should probably think about. Something you should think about. All right, let's go to the master chart and see what's cooking there. Okay, this is my last clip. I don't care if this is long because I really don't care. I just wanted to put it out there so people stop nagging me and telling me, yo. All right, so Spectrum Analyzer. This is independent and differently from the uh, Spectrum Analyzer that you just saw. This is pretty much a breakdown so you can kind of know where, we, we, where we've been and where we at and where we're going. All-time low was 710, 2001. All-time high, uh, 136, uh, 2007. This is the Fukushima. This is when people freaked out with the thing in Japan. And then sentiment was just bearish. Nobody wanted to even do anything with nuclear. Something happened here that things just changed. Uh, interestingly, uh, around 2016, and it just started grinding higher, slowly consolidated here. Hit a high of 106 and 30 cents somewhere around the end of January, and so far now is pulling back. So definitely bullish, um, but you have to just be a little cautious because you just never know. Spectrum cycle analysis. Let's uh, let's open this up here a little bit. So, cycles are getting toppy here. There are three that I use. Uh, this one uses uh, uh, a different algorithm, RPO, uh, and they all kind of say the same story. Uh, this was a little more fractal in regards to time, um, but. Somewhere around, you know, October, you could say January, there's two cycles that bottom out. Uh, and then this one goes in even a little more deeper. So you could do a composite of these three. I should have showed the composite of the uh, other spectrum cycle. But anyway, somewhere in that ballpark around January of 2025, where this cycle bottoms out and then kind of rallies up. This is unknown. This is just using probability. I'm not saying this is going to happen, so don't, you know, crucify me to the cross. But it's just, you know, it's just techniques that, you know, we use and I use to kind of forecast and kind of get an idea uh, if, if I'm going to, you know, buy the dip now or, man, should I just wait to 2025 and buy the dip? Uh, even if it just goes sideways, maybe when I buy it, maybe I got the wind behind me that maybe... We could go, even if it's just going sideways for, uh, you know, to the end of the year. I'm cool with that. But, you know, that's everybody. Everybody has a different, you know, time frame, trading style, you know, risk, you know, management and all that. So everybody has to have their own plan. Uh, and lastly, this is uh, the Bradley model. The Bradley model peaked somewhere around, you could say, March the 10th. And we made a high somewhere around January. Uh, you can see, you know, is there some correlation? I don't know. I just like to look at the Bradley model and see what what patterns I could see. So if this Bradley model is going to work somewhere around, you know, March of uh, 2025, it doesn't really go up, but it goes sideways. But it could be a potential turning point. And I think that's it for that. Uh, I don't really have that many uh, stuff here, but, but I do pretty much have a lot of uh, things here in regards to uh, GAN theory here. Let me see if I can open, move this up here. So my pitchfork, a lot of support down here. If it ever gets down, I'm looking at for a target of 77 all the way to 71. Uh, using the uh, GAN square, 
Uh, we broke through these angles here. The next support uh, is going to be 77, which I mentioned. Uh, let's see. There's another GAN square I have here. There is some kind of angle here. I want to see if this is going to hold, which is 83.22. Uh, the next one I have, there is an angle here, but we haven't gotten close, so it's going to take a while, but if we do get down, 71. <clears throat> so, excuse me, 77 and 71 are key levels that I'm watching for support, even if we go lower uh, into the whole year, somewhere around, you know, this would have been, by the end of this year, these are the key levels that if we ever kiss that and it holds and it goes sideways, it could be a potential uh, support possibly for the uh, turning point. And then the Fourier, this is a Fourier analysis I use uh, in regards to timing also. There's one coming up in uh, August, and then there's like a big cluster lining up around uh, next year, pretty much January, which January is like a hot month. Uh, so uh, actually there's one here coming up in, yeah, August and October and then January. And this is using different uh, pivot points. Well, actually, maybe not pivot points, but algorithm settings. Uh, this one uh, kind of picked this high over here. There's a crossover. Then there's a crossover coming up in August. This one in October. So it seems like a hot month. And then the big one, or you could say pretty much October or November around there. And then it goes into uh, March of 2025. And that's it. And then lastly, now that you got all this information, these are the kind of things I look at in regards to anal uh, analyzing uranium spot price. We're going to look at the geometry side of it, which is probably one of the most important things that Gen uh, taught uh, his students is you got to look at everything, but do not neglect the geometry of the market. So this is going to be the last clip on that. And uh, if you hung out, you know, hung out to this to the end. This is probably the I think this is probably the best part. Okay, so this is the geometry side. As you can see, I haven't looked at this chart in a long time, so I'm gonna have to kind of get acquainted with what I have here. Uh, so pretty much, I use Gans theory. Gans said always watch from an important low seven years into the future. It could be a potential turning point, and we already. As of here, we were somewhere, I don't know, seven years and change. Uh, and look, it's so far, it's playing out one of Gans' uh, theory. The number seven uh, played out in the uranium sector. Who would have known? Who would have known? But uh, I digress. This right here, uh, what am I doing here? There you go. This right here says to tell me that this is what the actual high was using the futures, 106.30. But since these are monthly close, it doesn't reflect how high it went. So I probably would have gone all the way high and then closed lower. So I wanted to kind of see, now that I know, you know, I have data and I can see what's happening in real time. I can mark these here. So let's look at the, um, the GAN fan. Uh, 45 angle here. You can see that on the close, we we closed and kissed the uh, 10 uh, the one by two, which is this angle right here. This is the one by one, and so far we are below it. Um, I'm getting acquainted with these charts myself, so just give me a second to kind of see. So okay, so now it makes sense. So when I was analyzing this, I was like thinking, you know what? Let me move this over here. Prices went as high as 106.30, and this is the one by one from the uh, January low of 2001 of $7.10. According to Gans theory, this is the line in the sand, and you guys have been watching, you know, my natural gas videos. This is where the bears camp. This is weakness. This is bullish on this side, and every time. Prices, especially coming from a low end, kiss that 45 or one by one. Most of the time, it fails. And then in the future, it's going to go try it again. And if it's really strong, it could penetrate it. And if it does, there's a high probability that we're going to kiss 136 and maybe continue going higher. 
But this was telling me, oh, you definitely got to be careful. Because if it can't close above the one by one, uh, which is the 45 degree angle, chances are it's probably going to go down. So you really can't see it with the close. But if you look at the uranium futures, we went as this high and it nailed it right at the one by one. That's why I say geometry is essential. It's like make, making sure you got a volume chart, you got candles, you got a moving average. It is so important to have geometry in part of your trading. I mean, I cannot stress that enough that you at least have some charts with some geometry. But, you know, if you don't really care and you make still money, good money without it, that's fine. I know I need it, especially to make some uh, forecasting and, you know, high probability trades. Uh, using the ellipse, so far we've penetrated it and we pulled in. That you probably want to watch out in the future and, you know, it's going to be 2031. Remember 2030, uh, 2032? Yep, remember 2031? Remember that date around there? April, I think I was saying, where it gets a little toppy. Even the geometry is confirming something. Uh, about that so i'm giving you a little tip clue especially if you're a ganist gan square uh let's see yet yeah, so this is probably going to be your 70 71 so that'd be a level i'll be watching this gan angle coming from here uh let's see that's a square mm, there is a potential vector coming up now on october you see october is another month that was coming up with the uh, cycle so this one you want to watch out because this could probably, uh, I don't know. I'm thinking October is kind of bearish in the equity. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting what's going to happen here. I don't know if it's a turning point. Uh, I mean, it could bounce here and then pull back. That I could kind of see because equities are a little more weaker in October, September, October. So maybe we could have a little dead cat bounce, you know, of all the sell off coming in. And then maybe push even lower. So, you know, that's something we'll have to wait and see once we get closer to these, you know, these months. Andrew's Pitchfork. Yep. 77. I'm watching that. Fibonacci. Get below 89. 86.90, which is 38.2%. 50%. Thirty eight point two Yep. Watching that. Advanced support. Let's see. This all the way down here. Uh, parallel lines. Support here. Fibonacci ellipse. So right here uh, of May, at the, you know, something was going to happen and pretty much it came in early. So it's just continuing. Nothing unless it was this peak where it popped and then pulled back in May. We got that pop in May. Uh, and it's now continuing. So these are way, f you know, way in the future. Actually, this is one in, uh, this is 2029. Yeah. So we got way more to go before we start looking at that. Fourier, yeah, I already covered that. Uh, horizontal line, that's probably where we were at last time I did this video. And this is 22 years from this low to this peak. Support at 7330, uh, 7322. So this is from this low to this high. This is advanced support resistance. So this is potential, which I have 77, 71. So 73 could probably be a nice little sweet spot. And I think that's it. I don't want to make this video too long. So to sum it up, I don't know if I want to own uh, uranium right now, even if we pop. Um, I am going to wait to maybe, you know, if it gets to 77, 71, uh, you know, it may not get down there. It might pop, you know, um, in the next month or so or two and rally with the equities into, uh, I don't know, September, October. Uh, and then maybe it could get bearish again. Uh, you just don't know uh, what's going to happen with, with all this other stuff happening. But I know that the cycles are down. And the important ones bottom out at the end of the year. And even if it just goes sideways, that's good. 
me, since I'm not in it, you know, it'd be nice if it could just goes lower because then I could get in cheaper. But if it goes sideways, fine. Once the, you know, price and time, you know, meet up, then, and using probabilities, maybe it'll start rallying into a 2025. But that's just me, you know, speculating. We had to take it day by day, but I just wanted to put this out there because I know a lot of my followers have been asking me, hey, what are your things? What are you doing? I know you're not in it, but what what do you think? And I'm like, yeah, you know, uh, you know, the charts speak a lot of words, you know, and the uranium futures, you know, it's still kind of going sideways to lower. And there's not really no one getting into it. I don't see volume to the upside. So uh, this is what the data is showing. And this is what the geometry is showing and some of the other techniques that I use. So let's see um, if we find a base for support uh, or maybe some consolidation where we'll go sideways. And uh, even if it just goes sideways to the end of this year, that's good because then it's going to be building momentum to go to the upside. So, you know, maybe by the end of the year, I would consider, you know, getting in. But as of right now, the cycles are against me. And uh, I don't think for me that this is the sector. But if you want to get in, get in, man. You're going to go to the moon like everybody else. So hang in there. If you're long, hang in there. Uh, not financial advice, but if you think, well, you know, you're going to make it to 2031, 2032 and have a fat check, then just hang in there with the gangsters. I'm going to sign out. Hopefully you like this video and I'll keep you posted on my thoughts on uranium spot price and uranium futures.